Hi everyone, so welcome back to Deliver Coding. So in today's video, we are going to build a full stack application using Next.js and Superbase. And we're gonna use the state management called Sustance to build a time lock application. So in this video, what you're gonna learn in this video is to build the UI using the Shots CN library, which is a library that helps speed us to build the application. And so you're gonna learn set up Next.js with Superbase to do authentication, pick protection, and data with policy as well. So let me show you the demos what the application look like. So as you can see, this is the time lock application, and so we have the trigger right here that will do the pop-up so then you can here select the calendar let's say I want to add to this date and for the, the hour we have this a uh, 10 hour and I works and with the note as well so when I hit save there's a little bit of pop-up right here that say we successfully and we have the list of table that display of the lock that we have lock and also this calendar right here just like githubs that would have the date and the, the number of hour that we are working on this one as well all right so i'm so excited to show you how to build this one so let's get started all right so the first thing first that we're going to do is to create our project so here i'm going to use yawn to create our next project i'm going to do yawn create next app here i'm going to give the project name so i'm going to name it time lock demo and we're going to use with TypeScript, ESLin yes, Tailwind yes, and source directory yes, app router yes. And for this one I'm going to choose no and this one is going to install all uh, everything for us. All right, so next we're going to outside our projects, time lock the demo right here and I'm using with Visual Studio Code so you can use with any tag that you want. And so as you can see this is the boilerplate from create uh, next apps. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to install the UI library. So to do that, you can go into this page right here and you can go into the documentation and then we can scroll down until Next.js. So the first step right here, we have completes already. So this is our second step. We need to run this one. So I'm gonna copy right here. I'm using yawn and I can open the terminal inside here and then I'm gonna paste the command that run right here. Right here, it will ask us if the component will uh, written in TypeScript or not. So, which is I'm going to do yes. And for the style right here, I'm going to choose the New York style. And the, for the base color, I'm going to choose slate. And for the app CSS right here, since as you can see, we put everything inside the source folder. So this is going to be source slash app slash global dot CSS. So this is the existing one. So we're going to replace this one and then we this one we're going to choose yes and uh yes as well and then this one just press enter enter and this one is going to click on this one and we're going to press yes right here so then this will uh create the file that necessary for our ui library so as you can see uh, for this one there's a conflict because uh, we have existing one so we're going to remove the ts file right here and then as you can see we have this um Tailwind that was written from the UI library and also inside here they create the components also the lips uh, Function right here that we can use later on So the next step that we are going to do is to remove all the boilerplate from this page and try to install some of the component from the library and test if it's working or not So I'm going to save this one. So let's run yawn run Dave So this will start our local phone 3000 so as you can see right here, we have this page right here. So first we can try to install some of the components into this one. So by default, when we use this library, it's not come with all of the components. Uh, uh, so what we need is just whatever, whatever component that we need, we can just install, add it, uh, and then we can customize and use it later. So for example, we're gonna use one of the component is Bouton right here. And to install it, so as you can see, we can just copy and using Yarn as well. And I gonna open an, in another terminal so I'm gonna paste this one so as you can see we run this one it will promise to ask will we uh, install this or not we're gonna press yes so this will add uh, the right uh, new component inside right here so you can see we have the button that is generated for us so the beauty of this one we can go here and customize the way that we want or add any variants that we need so for example they have come with the default variant such as default distractive uh, outline and something like that and to use that is pretty simple I'm gonna just import the 
put on right here so i think with the intelligence it's gonna generate for me and import for me so let's say click me all right so right now if we going back right here we should be able to see this button right here very nice so right here we can just um try with different variants so if we want and then we can go with destructive this one is going to go into the red color which is really nice so and then for the last thing that we're going to do is we going to install the sustain library right here so which is pretty simple we can just do yarn add right here all right okay so now i think everything is complete so i think that pretty much it so then the first the next step that we're going to do is we're going to build the ui as you can see right here first and later on we can add the authentication and connect to the database later all right so let's let's do that right here on our ui is pretty simple so we have um, small different components so the first one is going to be a now bar and this one is going to do the lock-in uh, and do the lockout as well and this one is going to be a trigger so it will pop up the dialog so then we can add the new lock and this one is going to be our calendar that will display the date of the month and with the, the, the number of hours that we're going to do in the lock as well. And this one is just a table to display the this one. So for that, let's do create the component for this one. So right here, you can see inside the component, we have the folder UI. And this one is going to be responsible for all of the component that we get it from the library. And so we do not, uh, I, I would not recommend to write inside the UI folder right here. So maybe we can do it outside. So first we're going to have the now bar, now bar dot TSX. And then we're going to write all of our components that we'll create. So it's going to be the new lock dot TSX that are responsible for this one. And then this one is going to be the calendar dot TSX. And the last one is going to be the locks dot TSX. So the locks right here will for the table. So now let's go back into here. So for our layout, uh, we're gonna put, uh, I'm gonna do the custom width so for this one. So then every component of on every page should have uh, its uh, specific um, width, uh, maximum width. And then we're gonna do the class names. And for the class name right here, we can do the max width to uh, six XLs. And then we're gonna do the max to auto and then we can do min height to screen as well so right now if we go in back here nothing's really uh, as you can see uh, we do not see anything but if we go on the larger screen so you can see we set the maximum width uh, to only this one all right so now we put it back like this let's go back into our page and then right here i'm going to clear everything from this one and then let's uh, write our now bar component okay so what now by is pretty simple. So we're going to have the H1 right here. It's going to have the times. And this one is going to be the button. So the button that we just uh, installed. And the button for now, we're going to do the lockout. For the functionality of this button later, we're going to update this one to something else. But for now, since we focus on building the UI, so I'm going to leave it as it is for now. So now let's go back in here. So then we can import the now bar inside this one. OK. So as you can see, we have this one. And if we go back right here, we also have the logo of this one as well. So for that for that icon, I'm, I use this library right here called React icon. So we can install this one. We're going to do yon at React icons. And then we can go back into our now bar and do some little bits of styling. We're going to do flex item center. And then we're going to do justifies uh, between. So if we go back, we should be able to see this one. And I'm going to do the P5 as well. So then it has a little bit of space. Uh, and then we have this one. It's nice. So now to put the logo inside here, we can uh, do something uh, like this. And for our logo, it's going to be the OI times. I think it should be this one. Let's go back in here and search for the time logo. Maybe. I'm not sure what logo we want, so I'm going to pick the random one. So let's say we're going to pick uh, this one, all right? So it's going to be a clip to our clipboard, and then we can import this one. And it's going to be from React icon slash, I think this one should be IO. OK, this one is going to be an IO file. All right, so then we can put our component inside here. And then we go back in here, we should be able to see this one, nice. So right here, we can do another flex as well to make it on the same line. 
and that very nice so we can increase the size of this one we can do with the class name as well so we can do for now I'm gonna do text to Excel so to make the logo a little bit larger all right so I think that pretty much it for this one so now we finish our um, um, now bar let's go back into our new lock right here so if we go back in here so this is going to be the dialogs so the dialog right here we can get it from the component that uh, was inside this library so so we can search for the component that we want so um, if we scroll right here so you can see uh, which is this one the dialog right here so the functionality is the same so you can see when we click on here that will pop up so we're gonna install this one so to do that it's pretty simple just click on this one and we come back here and just paste this one and run this command all right so right now it's gonna promise yes or no just press wise uh, uh, that we going to install this one so this is will going to install all of the component of the dialogs so as you can see right here there's a new dialog right here and all right so that's pretty much it so right now the same functionality is the same thing so i'm going to copy all the code that we have in here inside our new component called new locks right here so i'm gonna copy this one and then we're gonna replace this uh, function name to the new lock instead so the next thing is as you can see that some of the component has been uh, it's not correct so as you can see for input and label which is do not exist so we need to install that manually so we need to go back inside here and then we can search for that component. So the first one is gonna be the input. We're gonna do the same thing. I just copy this one and then we paste and then we run. So now we're gonna do the same thing, just press yes. So now we are done for the input and then let's do the same for the uh, label as well. Let's go in here and then copy this one and then press and then we're gonna add this one. All right, so now we press uh, yes as well. So then it's gonna be install the label. So this uh, should be, the error here should be gone. So nice. So now we can see this one, there's no error. So I think the error we have here, it's just uh, we get from this one, nice. So right now we can import our, go back inside our page right here. And then we can add our new component. It's gonna be the new logs right here. And let's go back inside the page here. So as you can see right now, we have the edit profiles. So we need to change this one a little bit. And then inside this one, I think for this one, we can do just a P5 here instead. So, and then for our now bar, we do not have to do the P5 right here. All right, nice. So, and then for this page right here, we can add some space uh, between this uh, two component. We can do space Y, and then we can do 10. So as you can see right now, the edit here should be uh, put it below. Okay, so right now for the, the trigger right here, we need to um, change it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all the, the button. So we're gonna do this one instead. So first I'm gonna do the width of this one to the 72. Uh, if it's uh, from, uh, from up and then if it's uh, below the small, so we're gonna do the width full instead. And then inside here, we're gonna use the logo. It's gonna be the, uh, we can import this from the React icon as well. We're gonna do G apps right here from React's icon slash G on. Um, and then, so for this one, we can just uh, do add this one right here. Right now, we should be able to see this one, uh, very nice. So now we need to do the border. So I'm gonna do some style for this one. It's gonna be border dash. And then we're gonna do the border. Very nice. So, and then we're gonna do the pattern for this one. And which is gonna be the PY uh, to threes only. And then we're gonna do the, um, just let's say if I be able to do the text center, is it's gonna go into the center or not? Okay, so it's not gonna go to the center. So all we need to do, we just do flex item center and then justify item center as well. So then we can have this one inside the center. And then we going to do the, I think I'm gonna do the border radius. I think, oh no. So that foot is gonna be around it and the. Okay, so nice. So as you can see right now, everything is the same. So what we can do here is we can have like the cursor to pointer 
and then we're gonna do some the animation and, and transition a bit so we're gonna do the border to solid so when we hover on this one okay so when we hover on this one you can see and now we click very nice so and then the next thing is we're going to change some of the thing here so instead of the edit uh, profile we're going to change this one to create lock and then for the message right here i'm going to copy it from this one so it just uh, some words right here just remember and things like that nothing fancy right here very nice so and then for the next thing is for the inputs right here first we're going to have so if we go back in here, as you can see, this one we're going to have as a date and then this hour and then the note. So the date right here will be a calendar. So this one, if we need to install the calendar inside this one as well. But for this two, we can do it pretty easily for now, as you can see. So now instead of the name right here, we can change this one to the hour. And then for the name right here for hour as well. And then the ID should be hour as well. So right now we have this one and the value, I think for now we can remove and then we can add the type of this one. It's going to be the number types instead of the um, a string. And then for this one, this one is going to be go as note and note as well. And then we can have note. I think let's go with lowercase instead. And the value of this one, let's say maybe we do not have any value. So we just place a holder as one note of uh, the lock okay all right so maybe we have existing value right here very nice and then this one is not going to be save change this one is going to be safe all right so the next thing is we going to uh, add the uh, date picker inside this one so to do that if we go back in here we can search for that component so that component this should be a date picker right here so to install this date picker is a little bit different from the other. So we have to install some of the uh, components manually. So for example, we have to install the popover and then we have to install the calendar as well. So for that, let's search for that two components. So first one is going to be the popover, which is this one. And let's open this one and then let's do install the same things, copy and then go back here and uh, paste this one now press yes and the next one is we're going to install as well is going to be the calendar right so let's go back here and it should be c and i think where's the calendar hmm okay here this calendar right now let's do the same thing go back here press yawn and then copy to the, our terminal and press yes so now we have installed everything already so let's go back inside our uh, date picker right here and this one so we can go back into our code so this is all the code that we need so we are going to copy and paste everything from here okay so we can copy this one and then we can create a, com a new component for this one it's going to be date picker .tsx and can just paste this one so if everything installed already so you can see there's no red line uh, indicate right here so it means our installation is uh, is good so going back inside our new logs so um, as you can see uh, we're going to have the same thing so first we can copy everything that we have here and then instead of for the hour we can just change this one to date and then this one to date as well and the id uh, this one we do not uh, need an id for this one we need the date picker instead so date picker i think this one should be date picker not date picker demo can remove this one and then we can do we can import date picker and voila so right now if we go back inside right here we should be able to see huh oh, that's weird no 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 this is wrong <laughs> okay should, okay as you can see we have a date picker but the size of this one is not the same so as you can see we need to do the cold span 3 so go back into date picker and I think I believe it should be this one right um, I see so which is gonna be the button right here so we can add the uh, this one 
can remove this one. So because as you can see, this is uh, width come with the specify like the width. So if we remove this one, it should be at the call span three right here. It should be about the same size of the rest of the inputs, which is pretty nice. All right, so I think this is great. So right now our dialog has been um, working uh, as complete. So we are gonna go next is to building this calendar right here. So this one is calendar because each of the cells right here is represent the current date and the number of hour that we get it from the lot. So for this one is uh, we can go back inside here. We can run a snippet right here. And the first thing first that we're going to do is we're going to create a function that generates the date of the month that we want. In, uh, uh, in order to do that, I'm using the library day.js. Make sure you run uh, yarn at day.js right here, which I have already done right here. So the first thing first, uh, we're gonna create a function called get date uh, in the month right here. And then for this one, we can use this one for later on. Let's say if you wanted to use it for generate for the next year or the next month. So we can have the parameter of the year and month inside uh, this one. And for the year and month, we can have a default value, which is going to be day.js. Uh, so we need to import this one first. We're going to do uh, day.js from day.js. I think this one is not the structure. We need to do something like this. Okay, so right now we have day and then we can get the current year. We can do something like this. For the get the current month, we can day.js and then we can do dot month as well. Okay. All right, so nice. So in order to get the full month, so we need to loop through from the start date to the end date. So we can have the start date right here and we're gonna do day.js. Again, we can do that year, but the year right here, we can pass the value that we get from here. And for the months that we have here, we can pass the uh, months parameter. And then we can add dates right here, which is the first date. So this is the start date. And for the end date, it's uh, pretty simple. So for the end date is going to be equal to start date dot end of month, okay? So right now we can console lock the value right here, the uh, start date and the end date right here. And then we can just call this one right here. So this uh, function right here can be generated. So you can see we pass, we put a default parameter, but later on if we want to use it to change the month, we can just pass uh, to this uh, function right here, which is pretty simple. Okay, so now we have this one. So in order to see this one, we need to import it back into our page right here. So this one is gonna be the calendar. And let's go back in here. So right now we have the calendar. Let's go into inspect. And let's see in the console.logs. Nothing here, I think. Okay, I think the reason is like since our page right here render from the server, that's why it's not can be able to see here. So that's we, we should be able to see here. So you can see this is the end date. So tw uh, at 31. And then this is the start update, which is really nice. This is what we want. Okay, so right now we have this one. So we need to um, generate the functions of the, uh, not the function, it just loops through this one and uh, generate date for us. So right here, first we're gonna date uh, array, array date is gonna be equal to the MT right here. And then we're gonna do four. Let's i equal to start date dot date, and then i less than or equal to the end date dot date. We're gonna do i plus plus, and then so then we're gonna add this one to the array. Update is gonna be dot push to start date dot date uh, index of i, and then we're gonna do the format of this one. So the format of this one is gonna be y y dash to mm to uh, dd. So this one, year, month, and date. All right, so after that, we can return the date array right here. So right now, we should be able to see this one if we render this components. So if you can see here, we can have this one. So if I refresh this one uh, inside the, ah, because we do not uh, console the lock this one, that's why we do not see the value. Uh, we can console the lock. So as you can see right here, we have the all the values start from the 
this one and to this one so right now we have everything's ready so the next step is we need to use this one to uh, render inside uh, the component okay so to do that is pretty simple we can have we can call this function right here instead of call it over there and then we're gonna do dot maps and then for this map right here we're gonna have the value and we can have the index and we can return and for this one we're gonna have the uh, class uh, name of this one is going to be height to phi, width to phi, and with the background color. So for now, it's going to let's say BG gray 100. And then we need a key for this one as well. It's going to be the index, uh, let's say, yeah, this one. Okay. So right now, we should be able to see something like this, but it's not looking good, right? So we need to do some style to the parents. Uh, for this one, so this one is gonna be the border So we're gonna have the border and then we're gonna have the border dash and The next thing is we're gonna do the flex of the components and then we're gonna do the flex wrap so then it will uh, wrap this one and Then we're gonna do gap of this one to two so you can see there's some separating right here and the pattern of this one to five so we want to put everything inside the center. We can do just to justify center right here. All right, so right now everything is going to the center. And then I'm gonna do round it for this one to MD and for this one as well. I think let's go for SM instead. So this will look better. All right, so right now everything is, is looking better. So if we go on the larger screen, so we should be able to see this one and voila nice so um, the next thing is we have this value so what are we gonna do with this value so we're gonna use this one to get the uh, from the lot and then we can um, uh, replace the value and show this one right here I think at first we need to update this one so you can see when we hover on this one we should be able to see the uh, number of hour and the date inside here so for that, we can have the component from this one and the component will be the hover cut. So you can see we have this hover cut right here. And for that, we need to copy this one. And then we're gonna do the same thing is we're gonna add this one right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste this one. And then I press yes. So this will install everything for us. And then we're gonna copy this one. So I'm gonna copy the, ins the import right here. And then, so we're gonna have this whole work cut. So I'm gonna copy everything from this one. And then we're gonna uh, replace it right here. So this is, okay. So now we need to cut this one. And for ho hover trigger will be uh, this component. And for the key will be the hover cut right here. Okay. So right now, let's go back. Let's hover on this one. Nice. So I think the next thing is we should be, uh, do the uh, cursor for this one to pointer. Okay, nice. So now we should be able to see this one. I think for this one, uh, what I want is to do the pattern tens, maybe make it a little bit larger. Nice. Okay. So for the value that we're gonna show right here, which is gonna be the number of hour, so which is zero hours on value right here. So right now we have the, so as you can see, everything is zero right here. So this value right here, later on, we're gonna replace it with the real value, but for now everything is statics first. Okay. So the next thing is you can see right here when we have the certain number of hour, we're gonna do some color into it, right? So then we can create the function that uh, get the uh, colors. It's gonna be equal, all right, this one is gonna be equal right here. So first it depends on the value of this one. So this uh, we need as a number and then we can do check condition if the value is equal to zero, we can return the BG gray 100, which is the default color. L, if the value less than five, we're gonna return the uh, BG greens 100. And L, if the value 
is less than 10 we can return the bg green uh, 300 and else last but not least is going to be returned to bg green uh, 500 okay so now we're going to do get color and then we're going to replace this uh, background right here and for that we can use the functions th that we have which is going to be the cn function so uh, this one and then we can do something like this all right and then we can just call the get uh, color and then we can pass a value right here so the value right here will be the number of hour and then later on we can change it right here so maybe right now i can just create an hours right here is equal to uh, zero and then we can pass uh, to this one and also we can pass to this one as well and then we can do the all operator if there's an hour or not we can do zero and this one as we can do the same thing right here so right now as you can see that uh, it's still this, uh, this color if I change this one to four and it should be has something uh, the color should be something else so right now it should be uh, all green because it's tent okay nice so right now we complete this one so the next step is we're going to build this table to show the list of the lock right here easy so you can just go back inside here we can find a component the component that we're going to go uh, install is this one so as you can see and so let's copy and this one and run and install this component to our project all right so here press yes so right now we install this one so for this one it's going to be pretty simple uh, i think we can just uh, copy and paste uh, everything that we have here or we can do just uh, manually for this one as well so i'm going to copy this one let's go back let's go inside our lock component right here and then we're going to have this one and let's copy everything that we have here and we're going to place it inside this one okay so right now we have a, a, a lot of things uh, right here i think this let's go back inside here we should be able to see no so first we need to go inside our page and then we need to add the uh, locks uh, component right here so right now we add the lock so i think okay now we should be able to see this one very nice so so if you go back in here we have only the dates hours and notes right here so only three so this one has a lot so we can have we need to remove some of the hat uh, right here so for this one we can remove this one and then we can change this one to date and this, this one is going to be the hours and then this one is going to be note okay and for the text right here we do not do any styling so make sure that everything is let's work like this okay so for this one we can have like the width of this one to be equally i'm going to do width of one over three for all of this one uh, and now okay now we should be able to see this one and for the table row right here i should be remo uh, remove this one and for the date right here we can just do the new date uh, dot uh, to date string okay nice and then for this one we just do 10 hour and then note uh, this is a place holder okay so later on we go and come back and we can update this one and let's see on this one on the larger screen and let's see on the smaller screen okay all right so i think that pretty much it so if you came back here the style is a little bit different but i kind of like uh, this new style i don't need to deborder around this one so i'm going to keep this one uh, as it is for now and then uh, for the table of contents right here i think there should be okay so this one uh, let's uh, replace this one with the caption of the let's say list of block nice uh, with s okay so right now i think our ui is complete so the next thing is we can do the functionality that adds the lock and then updates to everything so right now we have this component ready so as you can see so we can build a functionality that uh, when we add this one and save should have the locks to the specific date and have the list on this one as well 
But the first step is we do not need the backend for this one. We just do everything on the pure UI first. And later on, when we finish this one, we can connect it to the uh, database later. So next, we're going to add the Zustan state management inside our project. So then we can achieve the functionality that we have here. So whenever I click save on this one, there should be a record here and then should be able to uh, have the proper and correct hour that display right here as well. So to do that, I'm going to open this one and then we're going to create a, a new folder called store. And then I'm going to create index.ts right here. So Zustan works just like, I think just like um, Redux as well. There's a pattern that you can do with create slice and things like that as well. But in this video, we're not going to do uh, like that. So because this is a really simple application, we're just using like the really big store and then you can use it as a whole application. So as you can see, this is the uh, sample from it. So we can just copy and paste this one. But in our case, we're going to use with TypeScript. So I'm going to go to TypeScript guy. And this is what I want, so I'm gonna copy this one. Very nice. So right now, as you can see, we have this bare store right here, so we can export, so we can use this one. And for this one, we're not gonna call it bare store. So we use with lock, so I'm gonna do use lock state instead. And for this one, I can just change this one to lock state. And there you go, and we have this one. So I'm gonna remove this one, and also this one as well. So first, we uh, for our states right here, we're gonna have the lock. So for the lock, we're gonna have the type for it. So type, I'm gonna do type I lock right here. It's gonna be equal to, we have note, which is gonna be uh, a, a type string. And for our, it's gonna be type number, and we're gonna have date. For the date right here, it's gonna be type equal to uh, a date. All right. So then we're gonna have the lock, and the lock right here is gonna type the I locks right here. And so this one is gonna have the initial value. So it's, it's complained right here. So we can have the empty value for now. And for the hour, it's gonna be to zero. And for the date, we can just have the value called new date right here. All right. So next is we going to create the function to be able to uh, set the state, this one. So we're gonna have the set locks. And the set lock function is gonna work like this. So it's gonna return, and then we're gonna have we're gonna have to use the set function right here, and the set function right here. Uh, we're gonna have the existing state if you want, and this is will return the object that you wanted to update. So in our case, we want to update this lock, so we're going to return this lock back. So we can do something like this, and then for uh, so I'm gonna do it like this. So state we have the previous state, so this is the the state. So then I can spread the old state. And all right, so right now, all right, so spread uh, state.locks. And then for the parameter of the function, it's gonna be the i locks. So they're gonna pass the lock back. And the lock right here is type the i lock. And then we can spread it over again on this one. So it's gonna be the lock right here. So this is pretty much it. So this function, so we can use it uh, when on chain to be able to update this function right here, uh, this uh, variable right here. And for the state right here, we need to uh, do this one as well. So we can have the locks, which is the type of the iLock. And this function is gonna turn nothing. So which is void right here. Nice, so right now we have this one. Let's go to the new locks. And we should be able to use this one inside here and uh, get the value from our input right here, okay? So to do that, first what I can, uh, we can set, uh, we can get the lock, so we can use store lock store and we have the state and we can do state dot lock and we can do the same for set lock is going to be equal to use lock store and then we can have the state state dot set lock right here very nice so now this is get complaint because uh, this function right here this hook right here need to use in the client side See so our component is rendered from the server that's why it's, it's uh, it has this error so we need to set the use client right here so I think it should remove the error right here very nice so the next thing is what we're gonna do right now for the date picker we're gonna do it later so what we can do for now is for the input so for the input we can get the value so the value right here is gonna be locks dot um, hour which is zero so you can see so right now we have the value zero right here and next we can have the on chains event 
and now we can do the set lock so the set lock right here uh, is gonna pass the spread lock and then we can have the hour which is gonna get the value from here so we're gonna need to pass in this one so e dot target dot value so right here we should be able to get the value and then we set the lock right here so right now if I change this one so you can see it's working so that's why it's update the value right here so the chain is working that's why it uh, updates right here all right so we can do the same things for the node as well so for the node right here the lock value should be locks.node and then for this one it just should be only the node okay all right so this is not going to be path in because this is type string all right so right now if we change this one that should work and the next thing is we're going to go into the date picker and the date picker right here we have this value set um, on selects right here so we're going to replace this date so we can uh, import the lock equal i think we can just do the same thing with the new lock so i can just copy this one everything here and then we can just uh, copy this one so everything should work and then this one should be lock dot date and lock dot date this one is as well lock dot date and yep this one as well lock dot date and for set locks right here we are going to use the set locks uh, I think yeah this is what we want ah, I see because the set date right here I think it's a little bit different because uh, we cannot just pass the function set lock. I think I think this won't work um, Because this function will need to return something back. So if you look at right here, I think what we can do is just um, Do the same as for the rest uh, for the set uh, value So going back here, I'm gonna create another function for the set date. So this is specifically for the set date uh, only so for set date uh, we can do we can have the date right here as a date and which is going to return set and then which this one is going to return the date back with the value all right so this should do it so i'm not sure what this a uh, date is not assignable ah okay i see so we should have uh, the states right here and then we can have the uh, states we should be update the lock right here so the lock and lock and then we can have spread the state dot lock and for date right here we can just have the date uh, that passed to us okay so right now we can use this uh, date right here nice so then I need to register this one to the type so then we can access it uh, later okay nice and then for this one I can get the set date instead of set lock so it's gonna be set date and this one is gonna be set date all right now we can just pass this one so right now it's complained because of the type is a little uh, type of difference um, oops I think it's not complaining anymore let's see what happened uh, state implicit I'm not sure why it worked like this maybe it's a little okay so right now we have this uh, error right here so to in order to uh, remove this one so we can set as you can see this is the type of it so to import from this one I think we can just import it right here so I'm just gonna copy and paste right here so you can see uh, this is the type of the select um, and nope this one so you can see this type right here and then we just import it from this one so then we can just uh, do this one so I think that should be remove the this one nice so as you can see this is get the current date so which means the function is working correctly so the next thing is like when we click on this button we should be able to see all the lock and if you go back into the new lock right here and then we have this button so when we unclick on this one so as of now what I'm gonna do is just do the console.lock 
the lock that we have okay so let's do the inspects and then go to the consoles let's change this one so this one to 29th okay and this one to 10 hour and then let's say i work full day today so when we click on here as you can see we have the date the duration and i work full day very nice so right now we have this functions right here so all we need to do is we are gonna have the another state to collect all of these states and then add it to the uh, new state and then we can use it to display later on okay so we can create the function right here so the function is going to be equal to the submit uh, submit lock and then so for this one is i'm going to replace it with this one right here so we when we unclick we can we should be able to call this one and the first thing first i'm going to do is i'm going to create a function called validate lock because when we want to add the lock we should be able to uh, validate it first right so we can check if not lock dot date or not uh, lock dot hour or locks dot hour is equal to zero so because we need to we don't want to anyone because this two field right here is um, require so that's why we need to check this one so then we're gonna stroll date or hours can not be empty okay and then we can do another one l if lock of hours is bigger than equal to 24 you can say throw please enter a uh, uh, valid hour because let's say in a day you cannot work over or equal to 24 hour right maybe if this one like for your application if we can set limit it to let's say 15 hours a day for user to uh, do this one so right here we can just uh well lock and then we can pass the lock right here and then we can have the locks which is oh i think we do not need so when we call this one is uh directly call this one uh, already so we can just do the uh, try and catch on this one uh, we can do try and then we can do catch and then we can just uh, console.lock let's say the catch right here if we have an error okay we go back to inspects and let's go into back into our console so right now if i uh, change this one to zero and i hit save so you can see date or hour cannot be empty so right now we have this one so we need to a way to display this message to the user so for that we can go back into the uh, chat cn ui right here so in here you can uh, do the toast which is really nice so you can see we, we have this toast right here so i'm going to install this uh, component i'm going to copy this one go into terminal and paste this command so right now press yes so the first thing first that we're going to do inside this one we need to import the toaster so we need to import the toaster inside the layout so we go into the layout and then we import it first and then we're gonna place it under the children right here okay so now we have this toast so the next thing is we can just use toast and then we can call it from anywhere we want so let's go back into our new locks and import the use toast right here and then we can have this toast so for now i'm gonna just do this one okay so let's do okay toast this one right here and make sure everything's working first before i'm gonna change the value voila so right now you can see we have this toast and then we can just change the right here so fail to create lock okay and then the description right here we can just do pass the e right here uh, uh we can do a string a string all right uh let's see or maybe we can just do something like this this one is not working uh we can do a string okay so now 
when we click on this one again fail to create lock we can see dates or hour cannot be empty all right very nice so right now we can set the another variant for this one as well so i'm gonna go with the destruct here so we feed you the feedback to the user that okay this is uh, fail and something wrong uh, is happening to this one okay nice so right now we have the validate already so the next thing is we going to uh, call to the uh, store and add this lock into the uh, all of the locks all right okay all right so right now we're going back here let's try to create the locks so for this one it's gonna be i'm gonna do locks with the plurals and then for now it's gonna be an empty and then for the type of it for the type of this lock it's gonna a little bit tricky because i'm gonna store this lock right here as the object instead of the date uh, instead of the array because i'm gonna use it later on for to render this value easily so it's gonna be fast to render this one so that's why i store this one as an object for now it's empty object for the type of it is gonna be a locks and with the uh, key of string and the value of it is gonna be the i lock right here okay so right now we have this lock should be able to do this one okay so the next thing is we're gonna to create the function to set this lock right here so we're gonna do set locks and then we're gonna have uh, the lock that we have so we're gonna pass the lock back so the i lock and then we're gonna have the key which is gonna be a strings so we're gonna set this one so we're gonna have the state and uh, i think we can do something like this we're gonna have the state and then we're gonna have the uh let's say we're gonna have the locks and the locks right here is gonna be first we're gonna spread with the states dot lock with the previous lock and then we're gonna have the new lock, which is gonna be the key of this one and with the lock that we pass, okay? So this is how we do it, nice. So right now we're going back here and uh, I think I need to register this set lock right here. So set locks and we're gonna have the lock, which is the I lock and the key, which is gonna be a string and it's gonna return the void to us, nice. So now we have this one. So let's go back in here and let's do call the function set lock. And then we're gonna pass the lock that we have and the key. So for the key of this one is we're gonna use the date as the key. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the key uh, date dot. Uh, let's, we need to format this date right here. So right now I can do day. Uh, js slash the lock dot date and then I'm gonna do that the uh, I think I need to import the day dot js first import day js from day js and we go back here we can do dot format so the format is gonna be year and this month and dates right here okay okay set ah this one i confused this is uh dot uh, triple set lock uh it's been like set lock with s so this one should be set lock okay so very nice so right now we should be able to have this one and yep so if i click here and also we can console maybe we can can we try to console this lock nah maybe we can i can access this lock right here and then when we click on this one, I can console the lock right here. Okay. So right now, let's open the ins uh, uh, console back and do this one. So do this one. So now let's say I work full day. We add this one. Then we have this uh, function right here, which is pretty strange to me. Let's see. We have the set lock, which is return this one, and the key and the values lock. 
No, I don't think this is a problem. I don't think we have this problem at all. So let's actually go into the functions. Let's say calendar right here. And then let's try to access this one, okay? So we're gonna do use lock store. And then we can access the locks. We have the states. And then we're gonna do states.locks. So, and then we can just uh, console.lock this one. Okay, this one need to be the use client as well because this is the, uh, we, we, we render this use lock right here, render on, this, on the client. So for now, let's actually console.lock the lock that we have, okay? So right now, as you can see, it's empty. So let's create this one, which is 10. And then let's say I work full day and we hit save. So you can see we have this object right here with this dates right here. And then when I do 29 and I hit save, so right now we should be able to have two key, 28 and 29, this one, okay? So right now we have this lock and then we can use this lock right here to render and display the correct hour inside right here. Okay, nice. So right now let's do, um, so first, I think when we create this one, we should be able to toast to the user that they create successfully, right? Let's go back into our new lock and let's do copy this toast. There's nothing. So we can do this one successfully. Create locks. And then we can do, let's say, lock.hours. Uh, let's do, I think this one. Ah, nope this this one our uh, in the date so it's gonna be this one lock dot date to date string okay so right now when we hit save this one so you can see tens in this one so maybe we can do the 10 hours hit save or you can see 10 hours in this one in this date nice so right now it's at, but we do not have the ability to close. Unfortunately, like for the library that we have right here, they do not uh, have the functionality to do, do the close back. So the way that I do right here, you need to go into the dialog. So let's go into the dialog and then you can find the close functions. So it's, it's going to be, let's see, uh, this one is, is close. So this one is the dialog primitive close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the ID to this one. It's gonna be to close BTN. So this is uh, the close button, which is equal to this one, all right? So what I'm gonna do, go back into the new log, I'm going to create the functions right here. Close dialog, close dialog and then, so we right here we can do the document dot get uh, document dot get element uh, I see uh, by ID. So this is the ID. Not sure. Okay, I see. So we import the wrong documents right here, and then right here we can just do click right here. Okay. And now when we everything is successfully and we toast everything and then we can just do close dialog. So let's do it again. I hit save so you can see it's pop up and it's close the dialog as well. Very nice. So right now we'll be able to do this one. So the next thing is we're gonna do render this one with the correct value. So let's go back into the new law or uh, the calendar, which is this one. So right now as you can see when we lock this one we get the value, right? So we can have our own locks. So equal to the locks slash the value right here. And then right now we have this lock and instead of the hour that we have right here, we can just do lock.hour and then lock.hour as well. And then, yep, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, let's see. Huh. Hmm. Right now we got an error on this one. So we got this lock and this lock.error. I see. So because some locks, it may not happen. So because some value is not, uh, it's not exist, right? 
Uh, let's save this one. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. Why do we have this one? I think it's crash. Not sure why it's crash. Uh, let's close this one. Let's open it again. Okay, so now I need to restart this one, maybe. Okay. Okay, so I think this should resolve the error because the lock value right here, so we, we access this object, right? So when we access the objects, so let's say when we add a new lock, some lock might be not exist. So that's why if you try to access the lock without this one, it's going to get the error. So right now we do not see any value because of we do not have we do, uh, data and uh, save. So let's say for example, I do this one, I hit save. So you can see we have 10 hour on this one. So if I change the date to the first date and then change the value here from zero uh, from 10 to let's say five instead, I hit save. So as you can see, we have five uh, with the right color right here. All right, cool. So right now, as you can see, uh, everything uh, has been complete for this one. Next is we're going to use that to render on this table. So for that, let's go to locks. And then uh, we can have the lock as well. So cons lock equal to use store lock store. We have the states right here. And then for the state is going to return the states dot locks. And now with this lock right here, it is go uh, going to be oh, I see. This function need to be use client as well, okay. So now uh, we need to use it to loop in uh, over here and then get the value. So then we can do locks dot maps. Uh, no, uh, objects dot key of locks, and then we're gonna do dot maps, and then we can have the key of this one, and then we can just return uh, the table row right here, okay. So we can return this one and the key is going to be this one. We can use this as a key and then we can get the value of the lock is going to be equal to locks slash uh, key right here. So right now we should be able to have this one and then we can have locks dot hour. And then this one is going to be the notes lock.note and then this one is going to be lock.date lock.date.toDate string okay so right now we have empty because the data is not persist we just do this one it's safe so you can see we have this one let's add another one and then we hit save again so you can see we have this date and this date so the beauty of the doing with the object so you can see update it's very easy so for example if i want to update this one what i can do is i can select the date that i want and then i can just change the value whatever let's say five let's say five right here and it's safe so you can see right now it's back to five so inside here i can do the another functionality so we can check right here uh, let's say I'm going to use the CNs functions. Uh, we can do, let's say if the locks dot hour is less than phi or equal to phi, we can have the BG red of uh, 300 L. We can just do nothing. So um, as you can see right now, we have this one. Let's do maybe a hundred. So it's indicate that let's say for example in your company if you work in a day that less than the requirement hour that you want so this is going to display this color right here okay so right now i think everything is complete for our from our ui perspective so you can see when we add this one we have the state everything's already nice the next step that we're going to do is we're going to connect this one to superbase so what all we need to do is we need to call to superbase from here super base from here and then also the next thing is we're going to go into the locks and then we're going to list let's say we're going to list from let's say list from the lock right here list from super base okay so we can call it in the page or, or inside here as well it's fine so we're going to list it from super base into our store 
on initial load. So, all right, so let's do that. Now we're gonna set up uh, Superbase inside of a project. So to do that, it's pretty simple. You can go into the document that I leave in the description. So here is Superbase OSP with Next App Router. So this documentation has everything that you needed to do the authentication uh, with Superbase and Next.js. So the first thing first, we're gonna copy this one and go back inside this one right here. We're gonna create the env files. Oops, uh, env.local. And then we're gonna place this one. So this one, well, you can copy it from your uh, project. So go into your project's uh, super base. So in this case, for my case, I have create project already. And then I'm going to the project setting and then for API, we can just copy this one. And next is we're gonna copy this one as well. Okay, very nice. So right now you, we have all of the key that's needed. So the next step is what we're gonna do is to install all of the everything that's needed inside here. So you can copy this one and then go back here. I'm gonna do yawn at uh, this one. All right, so the next thing is what we're gonna do is to um, create the middleware. So the middleware here is happened. Uh, it helps when we do a session, let's say when it's expired and things like that, the middleware is gonna uh, have the refresh and so for us. So the thing is, I'm gonna copy this one. So all we need to do is just copy and paste it for now. So let's go inside the uh, source folder right here. And then we're gonna create the middleware. Oops, uh, middleware dot uh, middleware dot ts. And then we can have uh, this one right here, which is copy and paste. And for the data type right here, we can just uh, database right here, we can just remove. Uh, this one is just uh, for the database uh, schema and when you export it from the super base and then you can import it into your project as well but in so right now i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it so we can just have this one it's all good so um, the next thing is we're gonna have this one right here it's gonna be the auth callback so when we do authentications we're gonna call into our provider and then it will redirect back into this route and this route will redirect back to whatever page that we want and then this will also do the code ching and create a cookie and things like that inside here as well. So for that we go into side the uh, app right here and then we're going to create the OSP and then we can have another folder called callback and inside this callback right here we're going to have the routes.ts and everything just copy and paste this one. All right, so we can just remove this one. It's not necessary. And for the request origin right here, if let's say if you want after login, you want to redirect to any page you want, you can just slash any page you want. So let's say after login, you go and go to admin page. You can just change this to admin page. Uh, by default, it will redirect to the slash, which is the home page. And yep, I think that pretty much it. So. For now, that's all we need to copy in from this one. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is to create the OS page so that we be able to call the logins. All right, so let's go back in here and I'm going to create uh, not a folder, but inside the folder of the OS, we're gonna page the TSX and we can do something like this. Okay, so for the page right here, we're gonna have first, we're gonna have the the now bar inside and let's look at the page first so let's go into the auth page so we have this one it's nice and inside here we're gonna do the p5 so I think maybe let's take a look at the page first the our home page I think our home page is gonna do exactly the same all right so nice so let's go back into our auth page right here so right now we have uh, our now bar and then we can have the our content go inside here. I think uh, maybe we can just, okay, I think this one is fine. Um, so first we going to for the auth page, if we look, go back in here and we click on lockout, uh, I think this one has become like <laughs> our page right here. So it's fine. So inside here, we're gonna have the div so we're gonna have the paragraph. So I'm gonna copy the content uh, of this one. So which is the text, and I think it should be rendered here. Very nice. 
So I'm gonna put everything inside the center. So I'm gonna do flex, justify item center, and then item center as well. It should go into the center, but I want it to be center of the screen. So let's go with the height screen of this one. But as you can see, this one is gonna get scroll. So the solution here, we can go back into the tailwinds.ts. I think I forgot to remove this one. So I think we can remove the TS right here. It's fine. And keep the JS. So inside here, go to extend. And then let's go for height. And then I'm gonna create a new one. It's gonna be height to 80 VH and 80 VH right here. Okay. Now let's go back in here instead of height screen. So we can just height 80 VH V height. So like here, so right now, as you can see, there's no uh, screen uh, right here. Let's uh, scroll. So right here, we're gonna do the button, and the button right here is gonna be lock in with uh, GitHub. Uh, very nice. So right now, I want to put everything inside the center. Let's do the text uh, to center. Nice. And then let's do space uh, Y to maybe five. So then we can have a little bit separating between this one. Nice. Okay. So now we have this one. So the next thing is we, what we're gonna do is to uh, call to super base. And when we click on here, we're gonna do the login, right? So for that, we're gonna do call super base dot create client, uh, create component. Let's say, I think it should be create uh, let's see. Ah, I wish the, the intelligent worked for me. So create. Um, I think it should be create client. Oops, it's not working. Maybe I can do the import right here. So import from superbase. Okay, should be here. Superbase os. Awesome just right here and then this one is going to be create client component okay this is what we want so we, since this component is on the client we should be able to do that so super base is equal this one and then we need to transform this one into the uh, client page so we're going to use client okay so right now we have the super base client right here we can create a function called handle login And then for this function, we can do the um, uh, super base dot auth dot with the OAuth, and then we can pass the provider, which is going to be the GitHub. And then you need to pass another option to this one as well. So the options, what we want is going to be redirect to. So Let's that uh, redirect to the route that we just created. So it is going to be the locations dot origin, which is the current page, and then slash or slash callback right here. So this one is equal to whatever that you have right here. So this one is going to be equal to localhost 3000. We do this one is to let's say when you deploy to production. Uh, this will not uh, easily change so this will uh, automatically pick up the domain name that you have so if you pick a uh, plain text right here http uh, let's say local 3000 when on production you need to change this one as well okay so right now this should be able to handle this one and then let's do on click on this one and handle this one okay so before we call this one we need to go into our super base and go into our worms Let's uh, authentication provider and then checks GitHub is enabled or not. In my case, I have enabled it already, but the requirement to do this one is pretty simple. You need the client ID and the client secret and the callback right here. So where do you get the client ID? So first you can go to your GitHub profiles right here and then go into your uh, profile. Uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to wrong place. Maybe let's go to settings and then let's go into the developer setting right here. And then here you can see the OWASP app. So you can uh, create a new one or you can use existing one. So for my case, I have created a new one already. 
So the new one is pretty simple. You can see you can pass application name. You can name this whatever you want. The home page just uh, local 3000 and the description is optional. And the authorization callback right here is the one that you need to copy from this one. So you need to copy from this and then you uh, uh, paste it to here and then you can register the app, all right? So once you register, you, sh uh, you should be able to see the client ID and the client secret right here is uh, right now it's hidden but yeah so you can create on generate one and then you can copy and then replace it into this one right here so when you have everything ready save and enable this one okay make sure you complete that all right so i have done that already so let's go back into our application and click on register with github All right, so right now, as you can see, the login is uh, working properly. That's why uh, we have this one. So we can check this one by going to our page right here. So, and then we can, so this is the server page. So we can get the user session from this one as well. So let's do super base. And then we need to create server um, client, I think. Uh, I think it's not giving any IntelliSense for me again. So let's go back into the page auth. I'm gonna copy this one. And then go back into a page. And paste. So this one, instead of create client, we're gonna do create uh, server component client, okay? Use this one. And also for this one, it's need the cookie. So it's need to import it from the next header as well, okay? Uh, let's see, I'm not sure why we have this error right here. Is it a cookie like this? Ah, oh, okay. So we need to pass this an objects. Okay. So now for with this one, we can have these, uh, we can use the super base. Super base dot auth dot get sessions. And then we can have, we can access the, I think it's going to be data right here. Oh no. We need to do a wait first. And this one is gonna be the asyncs. And then here we can access the data. And then we can just console.log the data right here. Okay. Oops, console.log data. So this one you should be able to see in the terminal, which is right here. So you can see we have all of the information of the user. Very nice. Uh, oh, one more thing. So when you can see right here, on your terminal with using Superbase, you can see your can result in coding, something like that. So to fix this one, to fit this warning, uh, what you can do, you can just do yawn at uh, encoding. Oops, yawn at, I think the warning is just uh, the missing encoding module. So just add this one. All right, so I think I just closed the Dave server as well. I'm going to run it back again. All right, so right now we should be able to see this one. Nice. So with this information that we have, so right now we can use this one to do page protection. So for example, right now, if I, after login, I still be able to go into the auth page. Uh, let's wait a bit for the server to back up again. Okay, so you, as you can see right here, I still be able to see this one. And if I go back into the uh, this page, I still uh, see the, uh, I'm still logging. So what we can do is like, when we have this information, we can use this one to do the page protection, all right? So for the page protection, what we can do, we can do something like this, data dot session. So if we do not have the sessions, we're gonna do returns, redirect, uh, redirect, uh, I think we need to import this one first. It's not auto import for me. So we're gonna import it from next slash navigation. And then we can have the redirect right here. Nice. So then we can do redirect slash uh, auth, okay? That's how you do page protection right here. So this one is will uh, render from the server. So when one is complete render, it will uh, properly redirect you to the right page, depend on the session that you have. So we need to do the same thing for the auth page. So user should not be able to do this one. So for the auth page right here, since everything's right here, as you can see as the uh, client component, right? So in our case that we do 
inside this page is render it from the server so we need to do the server uh, page protection as well on the auth page so to do that first we need to convert this one uh, to the server page so the first thing first we need to create the components for uh, this I'm gonna do the auth components.tsx and then I can just copy and paste this one and instead of page we can just do auth component instead okay and then go back into this page uh, remove everything and then we can just import auth component nice so now it's on the auth page uh, it should be about to uh, the, the same let's go back inside the page and copy everything that we have here okay uh, let's go to auth and then we need to import this one right here so this one should be uh, imported from so I'm gonna import everything from this one then this got complained because we need to do the asyncs I'll wait right here nice so for this one we're gonna check if there's a session we going to return back into this page okay so I, if I save this one it should redirect me back to here so right now if I try to access the auth page I should not be uh, I should not access this one because this will block and redirect me to the auth page nice so the next thing is we're gonna do is implement the login right here so it's pretty simple go back inside the this one and then let's do uh, this one we can do just on the client so we can do just use client component and then we can create a super base equal to create client ah it's still not auto import for me which is sad <laughs> uh, let's do this one we're gonna copy this one go back here right now we have this uh, client right here and then we can do just to handle lock out and then we can do superbase dot auth dot sign out and we need to do a wait as well and this one we need to do in asyncs and then we need to do the router.refresh as well so for that we need to import the router equal to use router from use navigation and then we can do just router dot uh, refresh okay and then we can go this one and then when we unclick just this one okay so right now if everything is successfully let's just click on lockout and okay so right now it should be a render back to the auth page nice and also for the auth page right here we need to as you can see uh, we should not be able to see the uh, button lock out right here right so we can check inside here is auth page equal to use uh, I think we can have this path right here first and pass equal to use uh, pass names and then uh, pass names dot I think we have pass equal to slash auth if it's equal so if it's not equal we're gonna render this one all right so if it's not equal this one we're gonna render but if it's equal we do not render nice so right now let's go back again let's do login with github so let's go into our home page nice so right now as you can see we have this lockout and everything's the page protection and authentication is complete nice so the next step that we're going to do is to create this one and insert it into the database all right so the first thing first we need to go back here and then we're going to create a new table to store the locks so i'm going to create the locks right here and for the id right here i'm going to skip this one so we do not need the id you will see why we're going to have we use the date as a key instead so it's going to be primary and the type of it it's going to be the text and there's no default value which is okay so next is we can have the note and the note right here which is going to be type text as well and then we're going to have the hours 
and the hours right here is going to be the type text as well no 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 it's going to be type in in four right here all right so we have one more it's going to be the user id and the type of it is going to be the uuid and the value uh we're going to choose the auth id right here so this one is going to be uh, uh it's going to be auto generate for us if the user after authentication this this is going to be auto fill for us i think this is all we need and we hit save this one and it's gonna do this one nice so right now as you can see uh with superbase you can do the api with the api right here whatever that you want to do it's uh explain it's right here you can just copy and paste and do the uh whatever uh, that you need okay so i think the first thing first that i'm gonna do is going to the policy for this table and then we're gonna set up the policy first before we do anything otherwise it won't work let's go back here and let's say for the read uh, for read, I'm going to read best on their ID. So let's go here. Let's see select, and this one is gonna be read only if there is authentication is matched with the user ID, right? So this one it means the user be able to read only their own data, and inserts right here for authentication only. So let's do the review, nice. And then for one more, I think is we can do the update. Uh, we can choose the last template, the update right here, and this one you can just do true, and which is the same thing. So you can see uh, the user need to update based on the ID only, without, so you, they cannot update the other ID. And for the delete, it's going to be the same things, this one right here. So we click review and click save. Ah, I see. Uh, the problem, uh, this one is update, I name it delete, so I need to update this one to update instead. Hit save and one more policy is going to be delete right here we can just click on and save all right so right now our policy has been done uh which is nice so let's do uh the locks right here let's create the locks uh, come back here and let's go into the new lock and we need to call the super base right here so for that we need to uh, create the super base first so super base is going to be equal to create client Right now it's not, I'm uh, auto import for me as well. So let's copy here and do Im the import right here. And then we're gonna have the super base is gonna be equal to create client component super base right here. And then we can call super base from here. I think we can just call it bef after validate, all right? So after validate, we can have super base dot from this is going to be a table names going to be locks dot so in our case we're not going to do add i'm going to do the upset instead so the upset right here it is much our condition because we're going to do uh so this is going to be update and then yeah it's going to be update whatever the conflicts with this one it's going to be auto update for us like whatever the conflict so it's so and then we're gonna do upsert and then we can have the uh, lock so basically we have the lock right here but we need to pass the date so the date it's not gonna be type date right so for us right here if you look at the table the date is gonna be type text but inside of a lock right here the uh, the date is gonna be types uh, date so if we hover on this one we can have its type i lock and the i locks um so if we go back here maybe as you can see the lock right here and the type is going to be date so this is not compatible so it's going to raise an error so what we do is we need to have the date right here and we need to convert this one so what we can do is just do to do something like this okay okay so right now this is pretty much it so we uh, upset this one and then we can select it back so i can do select everything's from this one and then we can just do dot uh thingle so you may ask okay right now where's the user id like i said for the user id inside our table right here will auto import for us so uh, superbase know which authentication it is right now they know the id so uh, it will auto import for us so we need to do a thing await right here so right here, uh, we're gonna have the data or the error, okay? 
So right now, what we can do if not error, we going to do uh, this one. Okay. L if there's an error, uh, we can do. Oops, it's a little too large. So we're gonna do another toast as well, and then the message right here is gonna be error dot message. So this is just uh, handle the errors from the super base uh, that we have right here. Else we're gonna have the data. And the data we can use this one to insert as well. Okay, so right now let's uh, maybe we do not need this data. Okay. So let's actually do this one. So we have 10 and I work full day. Let's hit save. Okay, so right now it seems everything is uh, okay. Let's go back in here. As you can see right now, we have this data. Nice. So the beauty of up upset if you go back and right now, if I go into chain this one to uh, let's say 19, for, for example, and it's do the update for us and it's go back right here. As you can see, it, this one is update to 19, which is pretty nice. Okay. So right now that I think that pretty much it, I guess. Maybe one last thing, I guess. So we go back in here, if we hit save. So you can see this is the first of August. And this lock right here is not stored in particular right order. So when we hit save this one we can do is to uh thought this one first. Okay? Let's go that. And for this one it is pretty simple. We can just return this lock. But what we need to do is uh, do something else. So we need to, I'm going to change this one. And then we can do returns. And then from here we can do a bunch of things. So we can have like, let's say, update lock. Which is uh, going to be uh, this one right here. State. Which is this one. I Okay, and then for before we're gonna have the update lock right here, we need to do the thought of it first. So we're gonna do the thought it key equal to objects dot key of the update lock, and I'm gonna do dot uh, thought. Uh, okay, we're gonna do dot thought, and then. We need to, uh, so then we need to loop back and then we have the sorted objects. Okay, sort objects is gonna be equal to empty objects. And then we need to for cons key of sorted key. We need to insert inside here. So sorted objects is gonna be type of the key and it's gonna be equal to the update locks last uh, key right here. And then we're gonna return the objects uh, lock object sort instead sort objects. So right now we have this type is error right here. So the type it should match with this one. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this one. Uh, let's go back and then place this one. All right. So right now the error should be gone, and we should be able to see this one. Okay. Right now let's do this one again. Let's do first. I'm gonna uh, add the date of 29, 10. This one, I hit save. So, okay. I see. So this one, it should be update the locks slash uh, thoughted objects. So I think right now, let's try to do it again. Let's do 10 full day. So you can see we have this one. And if I add the, the first date, and it should be see as you can see the first date should be uh, on top of this one okay nice so right now we have uh, i think we have this record right here but right now when we refresh this one we do not have this one so what we need to do next is we need to call to uh to fetch this data and display on this page as well so to do that let's go back into our page and below here we can call the super base dot from block dot select uh, everything select star and then we can do the um, after that we can do order and then we can do order by what so order by date and then we can have the option ascending is gonna be uh, true okay so right now oops 
we can have this uh, data right here. Okay, okay, I think we missed uh, this one right here, the lock. So I'm gonna do this as a lock instead, so... Hmm. Alright, so this uh, will, uh, the error here should be gone uh, soon. So right now we have this lock right here. We can just uh, console.lock this one. So console.lock, the locks value. And if we look uh, on this page, Okay, so right now it is undefined, which is pretty strange. Ah, because we need to do the await first, okay? I've got the await keyword. So right now it's refetching, uh, let's see. Okay, so right now as you can see, we fetching everything from here. So right now we have all this list, but right now we have this lock, so we need to pass this lock into the right format for our um, uh, lock, because if you look at the inside the store right here, our locks right here is going to be type objects and it's going to be a string and then type the i lock right here right so we need to do pass this one uh, we need to prepare this data and also this data right here as you can see this data is come from the server and then we need to pass it to the client and to pass it we need to uh, to pass it to the store so the store is so we need to init this one otherwise we not cannot manipulate this one all right so in order to do that, we're going to create a new component. So let's uh, inside here, I'm going to create a new component and then I'm going to put this one inside the state. And then we're going to have the init lock .tsx. Okay. So we can have this one. So right here, we can have just uh, a reference. So init ref equal to use ref. And this one is going to be a boolean ref. So we can just check if the init ref dot current, if it's not. And then we can use uh, lock store uh, dot set state is going to be equal to locks. It's going to be equal to locks. Okay. And then the lock that we're going to pass is going to be come from here. And it's going to be locks slash. Uh, I locks right here. It's gonna be a string. Okay. So right now we have this one. Uh, this one is uh, we got a different type, which is okay for now. We need to do the uh, pass for this one, uh, and then we it's, it's it's equal to true. Okay. And now we're gonna return null for this one. So we need to pass this lock first. So for that we need to create a function call prepare lock that is going to take uh, the locks so we can have the objects maybe we can just uh, result is going to be equal to this one and let's go back into the index store right here we need to get the type of the lock and then this is we can paste this one right here Okay, I think the I lock here, it's we do not export this one. So let's go back here and then this one, let's do export. So then we should be able to use the I lock anywhere we want. And then let's go back into our init lock. Let's do the I lock. Okay, nice. So right now we have this one and then we can return result from here and then we can just uh, let's say locks right here is gonna be called to prepare lock. Nice. So lock for this one is pretty simple. So what we need to do is we need to do locks. That for each of the lock, we're gonna have the lock, and then we're gonna do results slash the lock dot date. Okay. So the Okay, the lock dot date right here. We're gonna cast it as a strings, because the value that we get because we store here as a text, right? And then the, when we get here, we need to cast it as a string because key is a string. So for that, we need to update the i lock right here to the date. We can do or string, okay? And then let's go back into our init lock. This should remove this error, and then this is gonna be equal to the locks slash uh, and then we're gonna do the date and then we're gonna do the new date 
and then we're gonna do locked updates right here okay so right now we should be able to have this date or maybe I think we can we do not need to do this one all right so right now we sh uh, I think okay we can do something like this now we have this init lock so we can just call this one from the page and we're gonna do the init lock and then we can just pass the lock equal to the lock that we have here and then we can just do as the i lock slash this one all right so for the use rest right here we need to convert this one to use client otherwise it's not working uh yeah so now let's do let's see something wrong with this date right here so you can see because our date is gonna be a string and then we're gonna pass this one to something like this right uh, I think it's error here is happen inside the first is gonna be locks right here because uh, we need to convert this one okay so for that let's go into the init lock back and then we're gonna spread this one and then we're gonna do the date is gonna be equal to new date uh, and then we're gonna do locked update right here I think this should work okay nice so right now it's working but I think that's gonna be a complaint from here but we can do this one as a date um, okay I see so we need to, we can have something like here date is equal to locks dot date as uh, date all right so and then we can just do the date strike here to date string so right now we remove the complaint from here I think from date picker uh, this one is gonna be as a date as well and then okay all right so I can see that we have some problem with this date right here so we can do locks dot uh, date is equal to lock dot date as uh, date then we can replace all of this with the date variable nice so um, I think we got a new complaint which is from here so because uh, when we get from here the date uh, I see because this one can do as a date as well so we need to <laughs> make sure that this is a date lock that date to date string okay okay I think what I can do is gonna be equal to after validate so date is gonna be equal to locks dot date as date and then we can just use the date uh, to here okay very nice so I think that pretty much it I guess and this one is also a date as well okay so right now to test this one if it's working or not uh, to go to 30 and then let's go back here I hello world let's hit save as you can see we uh, it's worked right here and then to update this one let's go back into let's say I'm gonna work three hour in here as you can see nice Alright, so right now everything seems to work on our local host environment. So what we need to do next is we need to build the project and see if there's any error from TypeScript or any error from Superbase or not. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go to do yarn uh, run build or you can just do yarn build. Alright, so as you can see right here when we build this application, we got the error. So the error right here, it seems uh, coming from the Superbase and not come from superbase and come from the way that we use superbase in our page and so this is a, the dynamics uh, server usage but in our page right here we do not specify anything so it's everything is going to the static that's why we got error so to solve this one so what we can do we can do export on the page that we uh, do the request to the superbase right here what we can do we export cons uh, dynamic 
is equal to force uh, dynamic okay dynamic all right so let's uh do this again and let's rebuild this one again so yarn build okay so i think there's still the same error I think I forgot to do one more page because there's two pages that do the request to Superbase uh, on the server page right here and need to be dynamic as well. It is gonna be the auth page. So we need to do that the same and then we come here and then we can do the same things right here and then we can rebuild. I think this time hopefully everything is going well. All right, so as you can see, our build is successfully. So you gotta make sure when after you run a project and build a project, you need to run the yarn build to make sure that it's okay to uh, deploy and ready to deploy. So right now, I think everything is ready. So all we need to do next is just test again. We can do just yarn run start and test uh, our application again. So it's gonna start on localhost 3000. So I'm gonna open that. And there you go. So everything seems to be working fine. Let's add some a new lock and this one. Let's add some notes. And as you can see, we just add this one. Everything is working fine. So yep, I think that pretty much it, guys. So um, that's it for this video. So hopefully you like this one and hopefully you learned something from this video. So if you like this one, don't forget to give it a like and a comment if you any feedback. And don't forget to share this one as well. So hopefully you enjoy this. See you in the next video.